Hi, Rohit. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Ah, uh, fine. Thank you. So, how are things going on? Oh yeah, everything is fine for me. Okay, so we have uh, less time only, so I'm directly jumping into technical technical questions. If you have any questions in between, uh, please hold on. You can ask it in at the end of the uh, like interview. So the first question I'll be asking is like, what is environment a specific constant? Yeah, so environment a specific constant is the uh, well while we create a constant. Uh, in Appian, so there is option of checking the environment as specific constant. Is this an environment specific? It means that the value will be different for like in dev and when we deploy it to test, it will be different and when we go to the production, the value might differ. So environment specific constant, we create it uh, to only for the specific environment that the constant will be the same, the name and the that UID will be the same but the value will differ in each environment. So uh, how, once you have created a constant in dev environment, if you are deploying it to test, you have to change the uh, constant value by, by uh, during the deployment time by the customization file. Okay. So uh, in between, uh, like you have named UUID. So uh, what is uh, like UA, UUID? Let's say I have an object, uh, let's say ABCD, object name uh, in the dev is ABCD and object name in the UAT is ABCD. So will the UUI, UUID be same for uh, both the environment for that particular object? Yep. So UID is the ID which is generated automatically for the every object in the APN. So whenever you deploy the object from one environment to the other environment, UID will remain the same. But um, suppose you have two things like expression rule and the um, interface. And you can make the same name of the expression rule and interface. But once you create, in, create it, their UID will be the different. But then the name might be same. Okay. So, uh, what is difference between two string and uniform string with an example? Yeah, and the two string is the single uh, text. Um, it's a string of uh, just a single text string. But uh, two uniform string is a list of a string. It means there can be the multiple string after that. Okay, so have you worked on integration? Yeah, I have. Web API? Yes. Okay, so what is like uh, integration, web API and connected system and where and all like we can use at, at which scenario we will use integration, at which scenario we will use web API and when we will we'll, we will be using like connected system. Can you like explain that? Yeah. So for, uh, for using the integration, we have to make the connected system. So the uh, so will uh, so in con integration we make it whenever APN is calling any external system. So the when the APN is calling any external system, want APN want the data from the means other environment, then we'll make it the integration. And when you want to expose your data to the other environment then you can make a, uh, a web API. So for means uh, establishing the connection between the API and the other system, we built a connected system in there. Okay. Uh, so what is exclusion and what is exception? Escalation and exception. We these are uh, which use we use in the process model. So whenever any instance is started, so suppose you have uh, the user click on the instance and on and directly close the browser. So uh, we take exception path of giving the timer to like uh, if the user doesn't complete this task for the three hour. During the uh, by that exception part that the task will end, we you, you, you we use the exception part to either 
a killed a task we can say so that uh, they will um, if we don't kill it they will more load on the apn engine so for killing the task we use the ex uh, exception and escalation is nothing but like if suppose you have the task and you haven't completed for like 3 hours uh, depending upon the time or we can decide and we can set a escalation e like a email reminder to the your manager and the assignee of the that task like that escalation is nothing but you they will send a reminder to complete that task so have you deployed like uh, objects in in prod by yourself or some other team is doing yeah i have deployed that okay so what are the like processes you are following for deployment so, is there any specific tool or no we directly um, from like suppose we have to deploy it from uh, dev to test then we are directly using the component deploy feature and if we, we have to deploy it to production, then we need to take the export manually and deploy it. It's not that we can we can't use compare and deploy, but so it's our organization is restricted. For any deployment okay. in the production, we are doing the in the patch and deploying it. Okay, so uh, in the process model, we have something called archival. So what what does it mean, and uh, like how 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 many days like archival you are setting? So it depends. Suppose, uh, like, uh, if you um, don't need the instance uh, in the appian, so you can give as by default it is seven days archival. Means after seven days, the you will not find that completed instance in the monitoring tab. So, uh, but you can change it to either three days, one days, depending upon the requirement which you have. Okay. If you don't need uh, the instance, then you can make it a one day also. Okay, let's say some error has happened in any process model, then how you will like check it and how we'll get like information this process model is breaking? Uh, it's uh, via the alert. If you set the alert to group of some admin people, so that okay. those person will receive the alert message uh, because sometimes the user will not report that we have got an error. But in the um, alert message, you will definitely get it uh, if it is actual uh, group and everything is configured correctly you will uh, the person will receive the alert otherwise you uh, second option is in the health check you will get this all the error details in the health check also health check report okay, okay. and uh, how many ways we can start a process in api yeah, yeah there are many ways to start a process in the api so you can use uh, you can start it from the interface also the any form by using a start process or start process link via record also you can start by means creating a record action and related action or by email also you can start the process by api also we can start a process and in the process model also we have a sub process and the start process to start the any trigger any process in process model. So what what is the difference between sub process and the start process? So sub process and the start process. Uh, both will uh, both are used to trigger one process model inside the main process. It's basically a sub process only. So the diff major difference is that the, the execution of the sub process will happen in the same engine. But in the case of start uh, process, the execution will happen in the balance engine. So I mean to say is like, suppose the main process execution is there, are, uh, suppose there are three engines in your app right now. So in main uh, uh, engine one, there are 10 processes being executed along with your main process. And engine two, there are three processes being executed and in uh, engine three, there are like only one process being executed. If you are using the sub process, the execution was happening on the engine one, that on that engine only the execution of the sub process will happen. If you use the start process, then the execution will happen on the 
that engine which the very less process is being executed on that okay so uh, uh, like can we start like a start process in a uh, sorry synchronous way uh, no okay and uh, like what's the difference between like synchronous and asynchronous synchronous and asynchronous in the synchronous the, uh, the, the both are the part of uh, sub process so in synchronous sub process what happens that the execution of next node will only happen when the execution sub process got executed in the uh, asynchronous the execution will just start and the next node will be executed it doesn't depend that or the sub process execution need to be completed. Then okay. we can also take the output variable out in the synchronous sub process, but not in the asynchronous sub process. Okay. So, uh, so what are the like best practices you use to follow in your current project for uh, writing like process model or uh, interface kind like thing? So the best practices is the means uh, we normally configure the alerts in the process will come for the process model first. So the, in the process model, we normally configure the alert, uh, alert settings and then data management. Uh, we use a very limited number of nodes uh, wherever we have the means uh, uh, similar uh, functionality we can uh, use that similar functionality create that in the sub process and use uh, the it in the main process so that our process may model will be neat and clear and easy to understand um, and we give the proper security setting to the users uh, or the user who is going to start who is going to be admin of that um, and then we give proper annotation means uh, why this process model is being built. Just a base brief about the other developer to understand. So these are the basic uh, which we take care. And we don't, uh, if any uh, uh, process variable are not being used, we should remove those from the process model. Unnecessary variables are uh, not needed. So, and we should give the proper dynamic name to the process uh, model. Uh, so, uh, process display name, we should give the dynamic names. Yeah, these are the um, for the like process model and for the interface, suppose there is any complex logic, uh, then we uh, should write a comment before that so that um, it will be easy to understand or you can give the requirement Jira reference ID so if it is lot in details then you can use the reference zero id uh, so that if any thing is uh, there then uh, anything need to be checked we can directly check those uh, from the zero and uh, if the uh, suppose there is a query entity being called in the interface then we should directly query entity or query record is being called directly in the interface we should make a rule of that and call that rule here so that it will be generic yeah, and what else? Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, okay. So, uh, thank you so much, Rohit. I'm done with like uh, uh, interview. So, is there any question from your end? Uh, no, nothing as of now. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, thank you so much. Uh, you will get the information uh, about uh, the interview uh, feedback in in few days via mail. So. Thank you so much for uh, giving your time. Oh, thank you.